Let's talk about scope ambiguity. And the best way to start with this is to think about the sentence, every student loves some teacher. Now, how many different meanings does this sentence have? There's one that you probably have in your mind, and then there's probably another one out there that you might not think of too often. There's really two meanings for this. One, there's a meaning where you have a bunch of different students. So we can think of every student being, say, these four. And then there's one teacher, I'll put a little hat on them, and every single student loves this particular teacher. So this is every student loves some particular teacher. That's one possible reading of it. The second possible reading is when you have a bunch of different students, and then you have a few different teachers. So I'll just draw two here for the sake of showing this off, and every student happens to love some teacher or other. So maybe there's three teachers here, and uh, students two and three like the same teacher, but student one likes a different one, and student four likes a different one. No matter which meaning you get, this corresponds to every student loves some teacher. So it's an ambiguous sentence. It has multiple different meanings. So we say that in each meaning, there's a difference in scope. So in the left one, the existential, um, we'll use Y for the object here. There exists a teacher that all students like. And on the right side, uh, for every student out there, there is some teacher that the student likes. So in our translation, we're going to have a different ordering of our two quantifiers based on our two quantified NPs, every student and some teacher. So I want to show you how we can do the translations for this in the step-by-step -step process that I showed you for one quantified expression. So if we have every student loves some teacher, I said that whenever we have a quantified noun phrase, what we do is we put some brackets around it and we give it an index. So every student can be X and some teacher can be Y. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move each of these to the front of the sentence and replace the gap with its letter, X or Y. And we're gonna have two different ways of doing this. Uh, one way of doing this is if we first pull every student X out front, and then we pull some teacher Y out front, and then we just keep everything else after the same. So this would be now X, uh, then we have loves, and then we have Y. So this would be one way of pulling it out. Another way of pulling it out would be to do roughly the same thing, but in reverse. So instead of pulling every student out first, what we would first do is pull some teacher out, and then we would pull every student out afterwards. So I can just make a little bit more room here, and then we'll rewrite that just to make it look a little bit nicer. But you can see there's two different orders that we can pull our NPs out. So this is going to give us our two interpretations for scope ambiguity. At this point, we just translate as normal, so we can go piece by piece. So every student X is going to be for all X. If student X, we use the arrow with for all, we're going to have some teacher Y. So there exists a Y such that teacher Y. And we use an and with the existential. Now we're going to have our predicate loves. And we know the order of the two things inside, which is going to be X loves Y. So this is going to be our one translation. In the pictures earlier, if I just do this with dots, uh, this is the translation where we had something like this. Now for the translation on the right, I'm just going to simplify the predicates a little bit. So some teacher would be exists a Y such that teacher Y and for every student X. So for all X, if S X, then we're going to have our predicate L. Then we have our two things X and Y, and we know the order that they come in. So in terms of our drawings here, this is saying that there's a particular teacher that every student happens to love. So that would be that image right there. So whenever we have a sentence with 
two quantified noun phrases and they're different, we're going to get scope ambiguity. Sometimes even when they're, the, when they're the same, they can have scope ambiguity, but not always. So all students love all teachers is not ambiguous. Some student, like some teacher, is not ambiguous. But if you say two students move two uh, pieces of furniture, then you can get ambiguous sentences there. So now this is nice because in predicate logic, we have translations. But in terms of semantics, on our syntax side, we run into a bit of a problem. And that is that when we have two different meanings, we should have two different structures. But if we think about the sentence, every student loves some teacher, no matter what form of syntax you're doing, we don't get two different structures here. Uh, we have a space for the subject, which is our noun phrase, every student. Uh, this could connect to an S. We might even be doing TPs here with a T bar and a DP instead, but it would still be the same thing there. You'd still get your VP. And even if you did put a DP down here, this is still going to be hosting the object position, some teacher under that NP or DP that's within the verb phrase. So if we have two meanings, we want to have two structures. So linguists delve into this thing called logical form. So the idea is that when you produce a sentence, you produce it in phonological form. There's some overt movement for, say, question formation, uh, yes, no questions, relative clauses, all that stuff. You get some movement there, and then you pronounce it in phonological form. Well, after a sentence is pronounced, it goes down a different pathway called logical form, where covert movement happens. And this is movement that you don't actually see in the spoken form. It's used for meaning. So we call this LF, or also known as logical form. So what we're going to do in logical form is create a new structure that has two different meanings. And how we're going to do this is just by doing movement like we did in our translations. So what we'll do is I'll use a different color for this. We're going to introduce a new sentence node and we're going to introduce a new noun phrase node. And whatever we move up first is going to take that position. So let's say we're going to move uh, some teacher up first. So let's just pull this. This is going to get dragged up into our new position. So this is going to be some teacher. We're going to give it an index. Let's say this is two, and we're gonna put a two there, and we're gonna leave a trace in its place. So this is kind of like doing our Y, but instead of putting Y in there, we're putting two. Then uh, to finish the movement off and get a final interpretation in logical form, we're gonna create one more S node with a new NP. We're going to grab our other quantified noun phrase that we want to move. So this would be every student. And we're going to pull this up and place it down there. And I'm going to put the E back of where it belongs under some teacher. We give it an index. We put an NP1 there and we leave a little trace there. So now, in terms of our predicate logic translation, we get a nice match here. We get the for all x, uh, sx, then... Uh, here we get for some teacher, so there exists a Y such that uh, TY, and, and then in this case for uh, T1 loves T2, we know the T1 is X, the T2 is Y, so then we could get our L X Y there. And there's another even shorter abbreviation form for your predicate logic translation, but this is just a nice way that we can do logical form. So this would be... Uh, one case of the translation, but this doesn't have to be the only way that we do it. So I can make this a little bit smaller there, and we can work with another copy. Uh, let's say we want to switch the order in which things are moved to get our other interpretation. Well, all we're going to do is we're going to swap around the NPs that move and index them properly to keep track of where they are now. And now we have, for some particular teacher, and for every student, uh, T1 loves T2. So this would be the particular teacher interpretation. And then every other student or every student out there likes that particular teacher. So this is quantifier raising in logical form to get our two different interpretations for scope ambiguity. In the next uh, set of videos, we'll be taking a look at how to do this in model theory for uh, truth conditional meaning, truth compositional semantics. And uh, then we'll move on from there to take a look at some more fun stuff. So if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. 
I'll try to answer them. But thanks as always for subscribing, liking, doing all that fun stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one.